Uh, so it's not strictly down uh, tribal lines. Yes. How has your trip to Nigeria changed your perspective on the United States? Well, um, it really hasn't done that much to change it. I think I, let me see, how can I say this? Based on what I'm reading in the newspapers and the magazines and the books in Nigeria, um, they blame a lot of what's happening to them, to the major powers, okay? But then when you look at it, when they analyze it, they say the major, major powers couldn't do that to them if their leaders were not so corrupt and made it happen. So it's not either one or the other. It's a partnership. And it's a partnership because they don't have this patriotism. They don't really necessarily put Nigeria first. They put their bank account first. Yes. Uh, as a woman on an all-male faculty, did, did you feel treated differently, or how did you get treated on the street in the Muslim area? Oh, very good. That's, I had a serious problem when I got there. I don't know if I mentioned this, because there were no women. I, I was at the airport by a man. Everybody at the guest house were men. When I went to the office the next day, there were men. I wanted to know, I said, I needed to talk to a woman. I didn't realize how much information women exchange. <laughs> here, I'm out here with all these men. I, I didn't know, you know, some things women just need to ask women. And there were no women. Um, but they really accepted me very, very well. Uh, sometimes it was kind of embarrassing. Um, here I am, I wore pants. And that's really a no no. But then um, I love them all and I talk to them all. And they have kind of like um, social lines, you know. And if you were here, you were here. And of course, I talked to all of them. My best friends were the sweepers, the security men, <laughs> you know. And they sometimes couldn't back on that. But I enjoyed talking to them. They couldn't speak English, and uh, I couldn't speak Hauser. And so we would just grunt at each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, but most of, I think I was really good for the department. They hadn't had a woman, and they hadn't had that soft touch. And they enjoyed it. The fellows, after they finally found that I wouldn't bite, they would come in and just come in and say, I just want to say hi. You know? And then they'd sit down and talk. And that's one thing that um, I really enjoy. They love to visit. They wouldn't want you to visit them. <laughs> <laughs> but they would always visit me. Somebody told me that Niger I need to live this in Nigeria or Africans. Don't they don't have a habit of inviting you to their homes. Uh, I don't know. I was invited to homes, uh, but it's not something that you do, you know, regularly. But I would have visitors every day, all day, sometimes all night. <laughs> really, I enjoyed talking to them, but they would come and they would stay a long time. <laughs> okay. uh, but they accepted me, and I was a mom to everybody. The letters I'm getting now, dear mom. <laughs> I was the oldest thing there. I think it was the oldest thing on the university campus. <laughs> Government said we're going to remove all of our assistance and we wouldn't have to pay the full cost. But that 
with really was something because every industry, every thing that had something to do with oil um, was attached to that industry uh, would be going up in price. And everything already was very high. Um, all prices were high, but salaries had not gone up. And so this is the, the government has said we might do it. Okay? Well, um, they didn't do it for a long time. The president made his speech on Christmas and he didn't mention it. Even though he even threatened all the time. So all at once in April, one day we woke up and the prices went on. And students went on the rampage. Um, but it was, I don't know whether they had expected it or not, but about 6 o'clock that morning, all the students, and this was nationwide, it was almost a spontaneous kind of thing. All the students were, on, um, were going to demonstrate, and they wanted to get off campus to march down to the market area to gain the support of the market people. But it seems that the market people have a lot of clout. Uh, they wanted to gain um, uh, sympathy with them, but the security agencies, uh, agents would not let them out of the gate. So they had a little battle there. And uh, then within about the next few hours, we got the news that the Minister of Education said the school was closed. Leave the campus in the next hour. Then you imagine somebody telling you now, you're going to have to leave where you're living within an hour. You know, um, I, I, I was really upset because I didn't know, I know it had to me, I wouldn't have had money to go. Um, so the students really had to leave. Uh, but I found that this extended family was something that was really nice. Uh, everybody has somewhere always to go. And, um, this, you just don't have to make a point. You don't have to tell them I'm coming. You just come and stay for a week some time. So that's what happened. I think it was kind of unfair because they kept the schools closed for six weeks. Um, even, even after there was no danger, as far as violence are concerned, students were ready to come back to work, they were ready to be peaceful. Uh, but the Minister of Education kept the schools closed. So when they finally, oh, the newspaper was just rampant, you should open the schools. They finally decided to open the schools. But then they, they said that there were four universities that started all this. And because you started it, you're going to have to stay closed another month. So they didn't. They had those other schools, those four schools, be closed an additional month. Now, there were two schools that did not participate in those strikes. Um, but they didn't participate in it because they had been closed before. Something else. <laughs> <laughs> but they were just coming back in. Okay. And because they didn't participate, they said, oh, you were good boys. You were give you some buses. So they were going to pay them off with buses for being nice. But the students are oh, really, they embarrassed the principal. We don't want their buses, even though they needed them. I thought it was great. I was just so proud. <laughs> I admit it was just so proud. But we finally got back and that was great. But then after another about three, about a month, we had another one. I haven't decided to go on strike. <laughs> and that lasts about three weeks. And then I thought uh, that was something. Why did it happen to go? Um, for about two or three years, they had um, a program in which they wanted the people not to spend a lot of money. Uh, you're supposed to, they were, uh, they call it SAP. They wanted to um, restructure the economy, okay? Everybody was supposed to put in your bootstraps or whatever it is you put in when you, know, you want to uh, help the government out of a tight spot. But then after that was over, during Christmas they said, there had been a wage freeze at that time too. They said, um, okay, we are now in pretty good shape now. We're going to give everybody a raise. We're going to get all the government workers, anybody who's a government employee, you're going to get a raise. Tell them how much you're going to get. Okay? So they gave all the civil service a raise. They let the university professors out. 